Today's video is brought to you by BetterHelp. Hey, brother. Okay, so here's a weird thing that's been like on my mind for the past six hours. Why is it that the Hogwarts founders chose non-magical creatures to be each of their mascots? I mean, really, it's like not that big of a deal, except for the fact that it's literally a school of magic and they literally know about Fantastic Beasts and one of the founders themselves actually bred a basilisk, which basically now I'm forced to believe was by accident. If anything, if I'm being honest, it kind of feels like one of those situations where I could see it being like a bet between Salazar are and Godric. Hey, hey Sal, what, what happens if you put chicken eggs under a turd? Just do it, do it, do it. Oh my gosh, Elga, you gotta come see this. Well, don't look directly at it, but like we'll get a light for a shadow or something. Rowena, can you conjure up a basement for us? No, not under the third floor corridor. How would that make sense? Obviously we do it in the girls' bathroom. No, I can't do it. We can't go in there. Obviously you have to do it. And also Slytherin, he says you need to mark the tap with a snake so we don't forget what we put in there. Five years later. Holy crap, it got huge! Should we kill it? Yes, Slytherin, it does have to be. Why? Because you can talk to snakes! What do you mean I have a, this sword? This sword could never kill it, it's huge! Three days later. Guys, I'm going to level with you. I don't think Salazar is coming back and he might also be a statue. Yeah, no, it didn't work. Snake is still alive. The good news is that we can count on it dying eventually. And if anybody asks, we all got in a big fight. And I won. Massive aside aside though, more to the point. The national animal for Scotland where Hogwarts supposedly is, is already a unicorn. And, and not for nothing, unicorns literally already inhabit the forest nearby the school. I mean, seriously guys, how are you letting the muggles out magic you right now? At the very least, these schools should have been called unicorn warts. Am I right? Man, we have like not even started this video yet. Roll the intro. In 2021, it is finally the time that everyone is okay with talking about mental health, which is why we're so excited that today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Okay guys, real talk for a second. Mental health is something to be taken very seriously and this past year has not really been easy on anyone. And I can tell you as someone who regularly sees a professional counselor that this process really does work. Whether it's gaining a new sense of control over the variables of your life or dealing with a dramatic incident or anxiety, lack of motivation, depression, whatever you need, therapy can help. If there is one thing that I cannot stress enough, it's that you should never feel bad when you're dealing with what are normal human struggles. And it is time to feel better because you deserve to be happy. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that gives you a variety of different ways to speak with your therapist, whether that's through a video call, live chat, or phone. So it gives you the option to see someone on camera or not, depending on what your preference is. It's also much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can get started in under 48 hours. BetterHelp sponsors this show and Super Carlin Brothers viewers can get 10% off when they go to betterhelp.com slash super. Again, that is 10% off when you head over to betterhelp.com slash super. One last time, betterhelp.com slash super for 10% off. Link is in the description down below. Okay, so maybe we got off track like just a little bit, but to be fair, I think that there is an extremely good chance that it was a perfect reenactment of what actually happened. But let's start by going back to square one. Put ourselves in the shoes of the founders. Imagine it's the Middle Ages. You're founding a wizarding school with your closest buddies. You've named each of the houses inside of that school after you, the founders' last names. Gryffindor, Slytherin, Hufflepuff, and Ravenclaw. It goes without saying we need animal mascots. What are they? Let's start with good old Godric. Gryffindor is pretty easy. I mean, it's like right there in the name, right? Door! How, how symbolic. He's open to all students. Okay, to be fair though, a door is still not magical, so we're gonna have to go with the lamer half of his name, a griffin, which gets bonus points for actually being a magical creature. It's half eagle and half lion. And then moving on, we've got Slytherin, who literally has Slither in his name. So Snake feels pretty fitting, but do you know what else Slithers? Worms. Though to be fair, he can't talk to worms. He can talk to them, they just can't talk back. But to be even more fair, he has a gigantic basilisk. So why not go with it? It's magical. Griffin, basilisk, we're batting a thousand. Moving on, of course, we have Rowena Ravenclaw and what would be the most 
fitting animal mascot for Rowena Ravenclaw. Say it with me now. A griffin! You know what? All of a sudden, I'm starting to see what maybe happened with Gryffindor ultimately choosing Lion. It's obvious what happened, right? Him and Rowena both wanted Griffin and spoke up at exactly the same time. Rowena! You cannot have Griffin. It's literally half of my name. Look, see, I wrote it down so you could see. Yeah, but Griffins are also half eagle. See? See? No, I don't see. What do you have to do with eagle? Okay, fine. You take half, I take half. Fine, I guess. I mean, lions are pretty cool, but to be clear, does that mean you're going with eagles? Yeah, because they have claws. And what's the second half of my name? Claw. I, I think those are called talons. Lions have claws, but you can't have lion. I already called dibs. Okay, now that we've statistically offended half of our audience, let's move on. Lastly, of course, we have Hufflepuff. And if Slytherin gets snakes because snakes slither, then shouldn't Hufflepuff get whatever huffs and puffs? It makes sense to me, which is why Hufflepuff's animal should clearly be wolves. Let me tell you everything that I learned about wolves when I was a kid. They huff and they puff and they blow a bunch of houses down until they get to the third pig's house, which is made of stone. Made of stone, just like the castle of hog, Warts. Hog is in pig. Warts is in gross. I suppose once again, the issue with this particular selection though is that wolves themselves are not magical, but good news for us, there happens to be a rather magically themed wolf. Werewolves. Guys, guys, werewolves. That's a, that's a bit dark. No, 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 you're missing the point entirely. It sends the message that Hufflepuff House will welcome anybody despite any pre-existing conditions. Werewolf scars are nothing to be ashamed of. They should be worn proudly like badges. Badgers? Do you think that's a good idea, badgers? What? No, 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 I, I do not. I, I don't want badgers. How, how about unicorns? They're nice, right? Actually, Scotland sent an owl this morning and it looks like they've called dibs on unicorns. You know, we're running out of time. I'm just gonna put you down for badgers. That has nothing to do with my name. Don't worry, neither does Ravenclaws. Eagles have claws. No, they do. You know, whatever. In the end, Gryffindor wanted griffins, but settled for half. Ravenclaw didn't understand the assignment. Hufflepuff had great intentions, but ran out of time and everyone else agreed that snakes are cooler than worms. Now, honestly, there has never been some kind of given explanation for any of the specific selections for each of the houses. And there's not really any explanation that fits nicely for all four of them. But that doesn't mean we didn't try. The first and most obvious one to work with was the symbolic representation of each of the animals and whether or not it matched up nicely with the house's ideals. But this really only only ends up working nicely for Gryffindor and Hufflepuff. Lions do in fact represent bravery, courage, and chivalry, which is exactly what Gryffindor stands for. And badgers represent hard work and loyalty, which is exactly what Hufflepuff stands for. But snakes don't exactly represent cunning, ambition, or resourcefulness. If anything, they're usually used to represent evil or in a more positive light, rebirth, because they shed their skin. That's why. Now, to be fair, Voldemort was evil and in a weird way was rebirthed and was a descendant of Slytherin. And I don't think any of that was by coincidence. <laughs> but those are not the specific qualities known to look for in Slytherin House. And that just leaves us with Ravenclaw and Eagles, which represent just a whole mess of stuff, including truth, majesty, strength, courage, wisdom, power, and freedom. Sure, wisdom is in there, but that group of traits could pretty easily apply to Ravenclaw, Gryffindor, or Hufflepuff. Moving on from that though, you could also argue that each of the animals represent where the specific founders hail from. Bold Gryffindor is from Wildmoor, Fair Ravenclaw is from Glen, Sweet Hufflepuff is from Valley Broad, and Shrewd Slytherin is from Fen. In this case, eagles are very appropriate as Rowena is from Glen, aka Scotland, where eagles are the most common in Europe and a quick Google search reveals they even use the word Glen. The golden eagle lives in the wild open moorlands and mountains of Scotland, favoring islands and remote glens. That was my best impersonation of David Attenborough. It wasn't very good. Ooh. But it said Glen, although Moore is also in there, which is where Gryffindor is from. And let's face it, Gryffindor was always gonna pick the cooler half of the Gryffin and go with Lion, which is why this line of reasoning doesn't hold up because in case you are unaware, lions don't live in England. Badgers actually super do live in England, which kind of surprised me because they don't live anywhere near where we live. But even strangelier is that snakes barely live in England. There's like three of them total. That's three species, not three individual snakes for clarity. There are like three 
species of snakes in all of England. And the Slytherin snake is specifically designed to not look like any specific snake. So that doesn't help us at all. But in case you are wondering, the only venomous snake native to England is called an adder. And even that is only like barely dangerous to humans. Moving on though, you could also make the argument that each animal is a representation of each element associated with each house. Earth for Hufflepuff, air for Ravenclaw, water for Slytherin, and fire for Gryffindor. And here again, Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff make perfect sense. Ravenclaw Tower is the highest tower of the entire school and eagles fly and don't have claws. The Hufflepuff common room is under the school and Badger's burrow. Slytherin is kind of there. I mean, there are snakes that live in water and the movement of a snake is kind of like water moving. Fluid. That's the word I was looking for, fluid movement. And the common room is in the dungeon located under the lake. So we're almost there. If they were gonna really commit to it though, they would have been actually underwater. <laughs> Scuba masks. But then there is Gryffindor, which exists also in a tower in the sky and lions, just like all other living creatures cannot exist in fire. So then it occurred to us that maybe each founder just had a special kind of relationship with each of the animals they chose. I mean, with this one, you have Slytherin as the figurehead for it. Like obviously Slytherin could speak to snakes, so it's a really, really good fit, but there's not any other explanation whatsoever that any of the other founders had a relationship with any of their animals. Though I do love to think that Helga spoke badger tongue. Mouth? <laughs> I just said, please come in and enjoy some tea and biscuits. So again, moving on from that idea to another one that I found very interesting, which is each of the specific animals relationship with snakes, which is to say, were the other three houses specifically chosen because of how they interact with or are known to either Kill, hunt, defeat snakes. This wouldn't exactly account for why each specific founder chose their respective animal, but it makes sense from like a literary perspective for Harry Potter. Slytherins is pretty easy to explain. Snakes are snakes. Lions have been noted throughout history, especially in a particular statue that is found not only at the Louvre, but other prominent locations around the world, depicting a lion crushing a snake. This is meant to represent good triumphing over evil. Along the exact same lines, if you've ever seen an image or a flag depicting a eagle carrying a snake, it means good triumphing over evil. The eagle being the good, the snake being the bad, in case it wasn't clear. And that just leaves us with badgers, which can I just recommend, go ahead and go Google badger versus snake unless you love snakes, in which case do not Google badger versus snake. Badger in this case is really interesting because probably the most famous badger worldwide is the honey badger, which is specifically noted for having a very high resistance or tolerance to snake venom. This would have been the icing on the snake, except for the fact that Helga's badger is not the honey badger and her badger is unfortunately weak to snake. Gosh darn it. That said though, you wanna make up a huge diet of these particular badgers? Worms. Oh, we were this close. Get it? Because that's the width of a worm. Really big worm, if I'm being honest. That's a real big it's worm. Kind of what kind of worms <laughs> you fish with? So that kind of leaves us with a couple of explanations that do fit really nicely. We just don't have any information to confirm them. And that would be that the lion, snake, badger, and eagle are all of the respective patronuses or animagus forms for each of the founders. As for the question as to why the animals themselves are not specifically magical, I think that there's a really good argument to be made for the fact that the founders of Hogwarts are effectively like the springboard for all of wisdom wizarding communities. Hogwarts is the first wizarding school, and the reason why they built a school was to have a place for wizards to be able to come together. And if that's the case, I also think it's very possible that Fantastic Beasts themselves had just not been studied or discovered or understood in any meaningful way yet. Especially when you consider the fact that just in the past century, Newt Scamander has been out there trying to build a catalog of this very information. But guys, I need to pass it off to you. Which explanation do you like the best? Is it possible? they were choosing different animals for entirely different reasons. And if you could change the Hogwarts mascots to anything else, what would they be? Let us know in the towel section down below. Also by sheer coincidence, we decided to make four t-shirts that feature the four animals that we discussed in this particular video today. If you wanna check them out, they're available over at supercarlinbrothers.store. Link is in the description down below. But guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you'd like to see why we think Ravenclaw House has an eagle mascot, instead of a raven specifically, you can check out this video right here. But otherwise, until next week, bye.